Hey everybody, welcome back to Heartland Productions. It's a very hot night here in Austin, Texas. It's about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which should make it a lot easier to get the oven. I'm gonna build the fire here in a couple seconds, get the oven up to around 250 degrees, 225 degrees, and I'm gonna to try to reverse sear some ribeye steaks in a cast iron skillet. So stay tuned, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We'll see you in a bit. So while we're getting the fire going, I want to go ahead and pull the steaks out of the refrigerator. I want them to get to room temperature for about an hour, give or take. It'll help them cook a lot more evenly. So while this is burning, I'm going to run inside and get the steaks out. So while the oven's heating up and getting the fire going nicely, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on so I can see the temperature internal, the internal temperature. Okay, it's already at 370. So for reverse sear, I want to let this burn. I'm going to get it down to kind of hot coals. I'm going to move it over. I want to get it down below 250 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when I want to put the steak in. Another thing I want to show you is that make sure you have some gloves. These are welding gloves or fire gloves. They're heavy duty leather because the cast iron skillet's going to be extremely hot. This handle, I've tried using pot holders and towels and sometimes it gets a little too hot. So I recommend getting a pair of these heavy duty leather, like welding gloves. They make it so you can grab hold. We got the steaks ready, I pulled them out. They've been resting a little under an hour. So by the time the fire's ready, these will be ready. These were, I had them cut at my local market. These are boneless ribeyes. I'm gonna go ahead and move the fire over. You don't have to be as neat because we're using cast iron skillets, so I'm not wor as worried about getting the stone too terribly clean. Oven's already almost up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. It's only been about 20 minutes. I'm gonna let the temperature burn down a bit. So why wait for the oven and the fire to get going? I'm gonna go ahead and cut up some zucchini. So when I pull the steak out at the end and it's resting, I'm gonna throw some zucchini into a smaller cast iron skillet and roast those quickly while I'm resting to have a side. For these, these are actually pretty small, so I'm just gonna kind of cut these in half. Basically, I'm just gonna cut these like this. Then I'm just gonna cut these in probably like little one inch sections, give or take, something like this. About like that size. Finished cutting up all the zucchini. This gives you an idea of the size. Please remember, I'm not a chef, I'm far from one. If you have a better technique for doing this, let me know in the comments what you do. I'm always eager to learn more. So what I do next is I take a bowl and I put some paper towels in it. And I put all the zucchini in the bowl on top of the paper towel. And what I like to do is take a little bit of sea salt and sprinkle it on top of it. It helps remove some of the moisture. So this really isn't for seasoning per se. This is more to help remove some of the moisture so when you roast it, it just doesn't turn into liquid. So if you do liberally sea salt it, mix it around. Yeah, added a little bit more wood just to keep the fire going. I want to let this burn down now. The temperature is just almost at 600, well, at 600 degrees. So I need to get that down to about half of that. The oven's starting to drop in temperature now. It's just below 540, so we're getting there. The coals are still hot. Again, I'm gonna wait till it gets down to around, well, ideally below 250. Let me give you a better look at the steaks. These are just boneless ribeye. You can see how thick they are. I mean, they're a little more than an inch thick. You wanna get something relatively thick to do a reverse sear of anything thin. It's going to basically cook all the way through without even searing. I had these cut at the butcher, my local butcher. They're great, these are prime grade, so top of the line. The good thing about reverse searing is that these are very expensive. So compared to other meats, uh, steak, especially like ribeye, is extremely expensive. So the last thing you wanna do is overcook them and basically ruin them. So the goal is to get these at medium rare. The benefit of 
doing a reverse sear is they'll slowly and evenly cook them at a lower temperature. And then once they reach around 120 to 125 degrees Fahrenheit internally, I'm gonna pull these out, wrap them, then I'm gonna crank the fire up. I'll put some wood on and get the fire going super hot up around 800 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we'll stick these back in the pan and basically flash sear these for about a minute on each side to get the outside nice and crispy. And then when you cut inside, it'll be a perfect medium rare, should be between 130 and 135 degrees after searing. Now the oven's starting to cool down, the flames are gone, now I just have some hot coals. I'm gonna go ahead and put a few pieces of wood on the far left side of the oven to let them dry out and bake. so that way when it's ready and at temperature, the wood's super dry and I can throw them on the coals and they will hopefully immediately catch fire again. So I put a few pieces over there already, I'm gonna put one more extend on the far left side just so those get nice and dry plenty of room for the skillet still in the middle the idea is to get those nice and warm so then when i need the fire hot again i can just put them on top of the coals and they should ignite pretty quickly okay the coals are burnt down it's still hot it's just about 300 degrees right now so i'm going to go ahead and start getting the steaks ready now that the oven's kind of cooling down, I'm gonna go ahead and put my cast iron skillet in to warm it up a little bit. I have my leather glove on. This is a 13 inch lodge cast iron skillet. I'm gonna set that inside the oven gently. Plenty of room between the coals and the, the wood that's over here warming up. So set that right there. So the steaks have been out about one hour, so they're nice and room temperature. What I like to do is start, just drizzle them with a little olive oil. Both sides. And you want to li liberally cover, cover them with coarse sea salt or kosher salt. And this is a big piece of meat, so don't worry about over salting. You wanna put a lot of salt on the outside, on the edges too. It'll make a nice coating, it'll make a nice crisp outside. So we're gonna liberally I like to pat it down a little too, kind of push the salt into the meat. Flip them over, do the exact same thing. Yeah, that should be good. Kind of again, pat them a little bit. Now we're gonna put a little fresh ground pepper on it. Pat that in a little bit too. Flip them over, do the exact same thing. We've already seasoned with salt, pepper, and olive oil. Now what we're gonna do, the oven's about 330 degrees right now, so we're gonna go ahead and put the temperature probe in. So it looks like they're pretty equal sizes. So here's the probe. We wanna get this about halfway in. The tip of it's where the sensor is, this little section right here, if you can see it. This is where the temperature reading is. So we wanna get this as close into the center as possible. These are pretty evenly cut, so it shouldn't make a difference. So what we're gonna do is stick this in the side Kind of right here in the middle. Let me zoom in so you can see a little bit better. We're gonna stick this in. I wanna get it about halfway in. You can kind of feel where it is. You put your hand on top and kind of feel like right here's the tip. So I wanna get it about right in the center. Right about right there. That should give us a pretty good reading when the temperature hits um, the 120 degree mark. So we're gonna leave that right there for now. And we're gonna go get the pan out and get these steaks on. The oven's just died out about 300 degrees. The, again, the fire's died down, we just have hot coals. I'm gonna get my glove on. Make sure you get your glove back on before you grab the handle. I have the glove on. Grab the handle. Sit down on the table. So you want to work relatively quick. We just got the pan out. I'm going to take the glove and I'm going to set it on top of the handle just so you don't accidentally grab it. Because in the past I've done it before, you take the glove off and you forget and you grab the handle. So I always set the glove or towel on the handle. I'm going to set the steaks. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on there too. You can see that, just put a little splash of oil in the pan. Now I'm going to set the steaks down in it. I'm going to swish them around a little bit. 
get the oil, make sure the probe is right there, perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna put this back in the oven. As you can see, the temperature is at about 312 degrees. Initially, I said 250, but it's dropping pretty quickly now. So I think the time I get it all in, it'll be right about where I need it. So I'm gonna put the skillet back in. I have the probe. Hopefully you can see that. Slide that in gently. Right into the middle. Take my glove off. Now we're gonna plug the probe in. So the probe's plugged into the number one spot. So once you plug the probe in, it alternates temperature. So you'll see right here, it says, that's the oven temperature right now internally. 308 degrees is the ambient temperature inside the oven. 66 degrees Fahrenheit is the probe temperature right now. So we want that to get to about 120 degrees on probe one. steak's been in there about 15 minutes right now so the ambient temperature of the oven is reading right around 278 degrees and the probe is reading 101 it's looking great right now so again we want to make sure we pull this out at about 120 degrees Fahrenheit the reason being is is that we want to make sure that it, it slows down the cooking because we're going to get the fire hot at the end and we're gonna actually sear it and get it up to the medium rare temperature so if you wait till this gets to medium rare right now, then by the time you get the oven hot and seared, it's actually gonna overcook. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. The internal temperature just hit 120 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. Then put your glove back on. Grab the handle. I'm gonna set these over here. Remove the probe. We're just gonna take the steaks out. Set them on a piece of foil for now. Again, we're just gonna gently wrap these up. This will just keep the bugs off it, keep it relatively at temperature, they're hot. Now let's get the fire stoked back up again. The fire burnt down quite a bit. The oven's still warm, but the flames burnt down. So what I'm gonna do is put another fire starter in, put it on the hot coals. Try to get the flame going again. So that worked well. I just put another little tumble, tumbleweed fire starter on there. Kind of get the fire going. A few little tiny pieces of wood again. Try to put one of the pieces of wood that I had sitting in there drying from the, on the other side on top of that too. Let that get burning again for a little bit. Another good habit, this is the hot skillet that I just took the steaks out of. Always put the towel or the glove on the handle so you don't accidentally grab it. I'm gonna go ahead and get the zucchini ready in the skillet. So as soon as the steak's done searing, we can put the zucchini in while it rests. So for the zucchini, I'm gonna use almost the exact same process. Make sure to get ashes out. This is a little bit smaller cast iron skillet. So the, remember we salted this and it soaked. So now it's just kind of pat it dry a little bit with the paper towel. We're going to put a little oil in the pan and we'll just have it ready there. I'm going to wait till the oven gets hot till I put the steaks in. Just wanted to make sure I get this skillet ready. So now we're getting the fire nice and hot. Ideally, I'd like to get it up to about 800 degrees to do the final searing. It's only been about five or 10 minutes and the oven got it going nice and hot now. It's almost at 700 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the, the zucchini ready in the skillet. We already put oil in it. I already have these salted and they're kind of dried out a little bit with the salt. So we'll put those in there just to have these all ready. You can see this, the paper towels on the bottom is soaking wet. So it absorbs a lot of the moisture, makes them so they roast a little better. A little bit of fresh ground pepper on these two. And that's ready to go. So as soon as the steak gets pulled out, we'll throw this in too. Okay, the temperature is quickly getting close to 800 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the cast iron skillet back in to warm up. Let's get the skillet back in. Flame, it's beautiful. Perfect, warm that up. Get the handle kind of there on the end so I can grab it. 
The oven's back to 800 degrees. The skillet's almost hot. Let's go get the steaks ready. Unwrap them. That way we're gonna bring the skillet, set the skillet right here, throw those steaks in quickly. Try to zoom out so you can see the whole thing. It's a pretty, uh, pretty quick process here. Okay, it's been about a minute. I'm gonna put both my gloves on to flip the steak just in case. Got both of my heavy duty leather, leather gloves on. Then you're gonna want some type of tool to flip it. I'm gonna use one of these, just a poker. You're gonna be very careful. Oh, can you see those? Those look great. Hear that sizzle? Gotta go quick because the pan is very hot. Even with these gloves on. So I'll flip that over. Oh, yeah. Back in the oven. You can still hear the sizzle. It's been another minute. Let's get these steaks out. Look at that, that looks delicious. Hear that? Okay, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna finish it quickly. We're gonna put four tablespoons of butter so I'm chopped up. Put one on top each. I'm gonna sprig of rosemary. You can hear the steak sizzling. Like I said, we added some butter and a little bit of rosemary. I need to do this switch gloves because I can't do this left-handed. Make sure you keep your glove on. I'm gonna baste it a little bit with that butter and juice. Make sure you get that rosemary into the butter too. So that steak juice, the butter and the rosemary, absolutely delicious. I'm gonna let these sit. I'm gonna just lightly cover it with a little foil. Let these rest for a little bit, just a few minutes before we slice these up. So I'm just gonna lightly put a piece of foil over the top of it, just literally like that, I'm not gonna wrap it, just cover it like that. So while the steak rests a minimum 10 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes, anywhere around that range, we're gonna go ahead and put the zucchini in. Should be all the time it takes for these. They're in the smaller skillet. I'm gonna put those back in. The oven's still at 800 degrees. We'll stick those in for a few minutes. Should be about the time these are done. I'm gonna check them here in about five minutes or so to stir them around a little bit. It's been just over five minutes with the zucchini in there. Temperature is about 680 degrees still. Just gonna gently stir these around a little bit. Just stir these up a little bit just to get sure they brown evenly. They're looking green. All right, let's stick those back in. Just another five minutes or so, those will be perfect and the steaks will be done resting by then. It's been just about 10 minutes. Let's get these zucchinis out of the oven and get the steak carved up. Look at these. Oh yeah, these look fantastic. One last kind of stir the butter. Oh, that sauce looks delicious. The steak's been resting about 15 minutes with this size of steak, you wanna let it rest minimum 10 minutes, and I'd say even up to like 20 or 30 minutes, but I'm hungry, so this one's gonna rest for 15 minutes and it's ready to go right now. Get this sliced up.
turned out perfect, medium rare, well, cr good crust on the outside, pink in the middle still. It's about 130, 132 degrees, so it's perfect medium rare. Absolutely delicious. Whew, it is extremely hot here today. It's over 100 degrees. I apologize in advance for all the sweat, but the steaks turned out awesome. Tico and I had a great time. Yes, he got a little bit, just a little tiny piece of steak. He, he loved every bit of it. It was a lot of fun using the Gosney Dome to cook them. Uh, I hadn't done a lot of steaks in cast iron and wood fire, so if you guys have done it before and have some comments or su some suggestions to make it easier or better, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. I'm not a chef. I'm not an expert in this. I, hopefully, uh, I don't claim to be an expert. I just enjoy cooking with it. So I'd love to learn more too. Next time around, I'll probably try to cook a steak without doing the reverse sear. I'll just build the fire up and just do a full cook right at the beginning to see what the difference is and to see which one I like better. I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up. And again, let me know any other suggestions or things I could do different or things that you think I did wrong. Love to hear them. See you guys later.